What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be taking you through my OBS settings for recording. Obviously, you shouldn't base your settings off of what I have. It's just an outline of what I do. If you want to copy something, go ahead. Ultimately, whatever works best for you is what you should go with. So without further ado, here we go. In OBS Studio here, you can see my setup. In the bottom left, I have stats, which is somewhat useful whenever I'm playing a really resource intensive game. And for some reason, OBS starts freaking out. I'll see information about what exactly is happening here, as well as this little section down here going red. That's default, but this stats window here is rather useful. To get it, go to docs at the very top and enable stats just like that. If you'd like to move this somewhere else, just grab the title bar up here and you can drag it off to its own separate window or just drag it back like that. Anyways, this is how I have things set up. If I change back to scenes, you'll see that I can't shrink this section any further. That's because of the stats window. It has a minimum size and also means OBS can only get this small, which is probably around 900 pixels or so wide. If I separate the stats window, however, I can make OBS quite a bit smaller. So if you choose to have the just keep in mind that it is quite a space hog and I can't put it back until it's big enough. There we go. In the sources section here, I have admittedly far too many things that I really don't use at all. I mainly only record with this main section down here. This is just a normal display capture set to my primary display. It records full screen games, windowed games, etc. Sometimes I'll use the any full screen option here, which is just a standard game capture with capture foreground window with hotkey selected as the mode. Whenever I turn this on, you won't see any difference, except for when I tab into a game, hit control numpad minus, it'll record whatever game it is that I'm currently tabbed into. This is a good idea if I have other sensitive programs open that I wouldn't like to show a recording, or even certain overlays that don't show with this. Anyways, I rarely use that, and the rest of these are pretty much useless for the most part. I have certain ones like Sandbox, Remote Desktop, Typo, that is, simply because these are normal window captures set up for specific windows, but they're cropped in such a way that it gets rid of the title bar at the very top of them. That way, whenever I fire up the sandbox or whatever, it'll crop off the title bar and place it nicely on my screen. All that's left to do is really just adjust the height of the program so it more easily fits the full screen here. That being said, usually whenever I'm recording, I use auto hotkey to just resize any program to 1080p and another hotkey to center it. This is a private script of mine. Should you be interested in it, do let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, by doing that, start X in my case, it resizes any program to 1080p. Using a 2K screen, whenever I apply a 133% zoom in Adobe, it'll zoom in to show that window perfectly in all 1080p pixels. So usually whenever I'm recording and zoom into something, it's not good to do with OBS. Instead, it's just my screen size and preset zooming templates or presets in Premiere Pro. For the audio mixer, there's nothing too interesting going on here. I've got my desktop audio as the top one here, which is Spotify, games, etc. Desktop audio 2, which is another physical output on my Audient ID 14. DAC, this has Discord and other chat apps like that on it, just to keep them separated from the game. And finally, my microphone at the very bottom. Microphone is obviously the loudest. Spotify and games are a little bit lower. And my Discord and things like that are even lower yet. That's just because of the different volumes whenever I do go live, if ever, which isn't often. If I click the options for these, you'll see that I don't use any filters in my microphone here, on my Discord channel either, and on the normal desktop audio tab here is the only place I use an effect. This compressor here will automatically duck the volume of whatever I'm listening to whenever I'm speaking. You can see by enabling it, the volume drops here quite a bit to around 35-ish. As soon as I stop speaking, it goes all the way up to negative 20, and now it drops back down. Currently, I'm just listening to music, so it's bouncing around, but for the most part, you can see it gets quite a bit quieter whenever I'm speaking, which is great for streaming. That way, I can speak over games, music, etc. If we head into the advanced section here, using the audio mixer settings, you'll see how I have things set up here. I have all of my tracks, which is desktop audio, Discord, and microphone, all on track one. This is sent off whenever I'm streaming. Track 
2, 3 and 4 are selected in this way so that I only get one output to one track in the video recording. We'll get there in just a moment. My game audio is separate from my Discord audio, is separate from my microphone. Everything else here is unticked so that there's no mixing between things. I can separate them and mute them as necessary in my editing software after recording or streaming. Just to continue with that, heading into settings over here, then to the audio section, you can see my outputs here. These are two physical outputs, which combine into the same headphones, which is great for me. Obviously, if you choose to have things separated, you'll need to use virtual audio cable and programs like that, but I'll get into that at another time. And of course, my microphone. Heading to the output section, then recording, you'll see down here that I have track one disabled, two, three, and four selected, which is game sound, discord, and microphone. Five doesn't need to be ticked here. On the streaming tab, track one is selected, meaning that everything combined is sent whenever I stream. In recordings, everything is separated. Now this probably looks quite a bit different to you as I have advanced mode selected and custom output FFmpeg. Do note that all of my settings here are completely overkill and you don't need to push them as far as I do. I just do it for that bit of extra quality as I have tons of drive space available, as you can see here, so I'm more than happy to use it. I usually record to my hard drive here, then when I'm editing, it gets processed on my SSD, rendered on this SSD and uploaded. This is just a really cheap bottom of the barrel, two terabyte NVMe SSD that I bought because I knew I would hammer it really hard and it's actually put up quite a good job. Anyways, I record using the Matroska or MKV format, which I would highly recommend as if you're recording an MP4 and your PC crashes, OBS crashes, or you blue screen, congratulations, you've just lost your entire recording. However, in a format like MKV, you can fix it up after the fact and get pretty much everything back that you were recording right before the crash. So this is an incredibly important thing to have set up. Though, if you're editing in Premiere Pro, you will need to remux, which is essentially turning MKV files to MP4. Should you choose Matroska, you can head to File at the very top left of OBS, then Remux Recordings, and import one here. Remux, and it'll be dropped out as an MP4 file. Really useful. Anyway, Settings, Video, Output, Recording, let's continue. Down here, Video Bitrate is 60 megabits, or 60,000 kilobits, just a really high bitrate to result in practice practically no blockiness, even in fast moving games. It usually won't go this high whenever I'm recording my desktop, so it's fine. Keyframe interval, not too sure what impact it has, I've just left it at the default of 120. I don't rescale my output, and down here by video encoder, I've made sure to choose an NVENC encoder, which means that it uses my graphics card. H.264 NVENC is great. You can use the H.265 NVENC encoder. There we go, I had to tick show all. Havoc NVENC. This may or may not work with MKV, in my experience, it does work okay, but it's a bit more efficient to edit in MP4 as it doesn't have to put in so much effort to decode and re-encode while you're editing, scrubbing the timeline, etc. It's just better leaving it at the normal MP4 standard. Video encoder is just left at the high profile using hyphen profile V high. Not too sure what impact it has. As far as I understand, it's just a higher quality preset for the NVENC encoder. Audio bitrate is absolutely maxed out. This is as high as it goes. And the audio encoder is set to PCM S24 LE. There's a ton of different formats here. This is practically just the default for wave audio files, meaning that the audio isn't compressed practically at all, which is great. It gives me the ultimate ability to control it after the fact. Audio tracks we've already covered, and that's really about it here. On the audio section, I have audio bitrate for each of these channels maxed out at 320, which is as high as MP3s can go. So this audio bitrate over here may actually have no effect, but anyways, it's nice to think that it improves audio quality even ever so slightly. The streaming tab, I haven't done anything here. Doesn't look like anything special. If I were to stream, I would need to go through this and fix things up. Audio, we've gone through. I haven't changed anything here for the most part. Video, I use the base canvas and output resolution, which matches my display. And FPS, I record at 120. My screen goes up to 165. It means that I can slow things down later and have a very not noticeable effect. Hotkeys, there's nothing too crazy here. My start recording hotkey is Alt scrolling down. The hotkey for capturing the foreground window is Alt numpad minus. 
just so it's far and out of the way, and that's really about it for hotkeys. Accessibility, nothing selected here, and advanced, nothing here either. I record Direct3D 11, NV12, color format, color space, Rec 709, range limited, 300 nits, and HDR is left as is. These are pretty much default settings and should match whatever your display is. If your color range in your NVIDIA control panel or whatever you use is limited, this should be limited. Otherwise, colors will be really saturated or really washed out. Just leave it at the default if you don't know what you're doing. For the most part, that's really about it. I use the Yami theme, the default theme for OBS. I should probably get to changing it at some stage, but I'm lazy. Everything else here is pretty much default. That's my entire rundown of my settings in OBS Studio. I do have other scenes here, but it's been years since I've used these and I honestly have no idea what's inside of them. As for everything else here, well, there's some cleanup that needs to be done, but honestly, it works, so I'm just leaving it as is. I could probably remove most of these and live happily. Anyways, that's about it for this quick rundown, I suppose. Hopefully you found this somewhat interesting. Mine has been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!